other day I glued up just the outer rim because this is all three quarter inch. Then I'm putting it on quarter inch risers to connect the main spar for the rudder uh, and it's an inch and a quarter so a quarter inch on each side in there so it's a nice big stock in there for the main rudder spar I guess you would call that. Now speaking of strength you've got that nice spar and I guess it's bigger and it's also going to be a bit of an airfoil because these are not um, the regular three quarter by quarter inch pieces of wood that we used before. This is plywood, quarter inch plywood that you actually bevel a bit of an airfoil into and it's one and a quarter by quarter I believe is what it is. It doesn't actually say anywhere. What did I have here? Yeah, one and a quarter I found by a quarter inch for and you won't find T211 anywhere in your plans so don't worry about that but it's an inch and a quarter this way so it matches up with a spar out there but then it tapers down to three quarters of an inch for the outer rim. Now you've got that quarter one and a quarter piece of spruce on the inside but then they want you to take and cut a slice all the way along because the hinge is going to be in here somewhere. So if that doesn't weaken it, what, who knows what does because that's one heck of a cut coming all the way down. So what I did, I drilled a bunch of 16th inch holes in mine in the appropriate place. Um, and what you do is all these lines that are on there, I don't know if you can see that. This is beveled down. This is beveled down. So you've got a little bit of a V all the way down and that's to allow the rudder to move when it's against the tail fin, the vertical stabilizer. So it just gives that little movement in there. It gives you space to, for the rudder to move. Um, so that's what these lines are. That's the beveling down. This one long cut all the way down here and I can see it's for ease of cutting, right? Because you can just take the or saw and just saw it out, but you're only using this last six inches for the hinge. And the rest of this is just two pieces of wood, basically. So I just drilled 16 inch holes in here, um, bore that out a bit with my little vibrating saw and then put the saber saw in there and cut six inches. I did about six and a half to give it a little bit of play one way or another because we don't know where the final hinge placement is going to be until you have it in place. So that's what I did on mine. I'm not cutting the whole main spar there and what it would have it be is a cut all the way along and then somewhere in here you're going to put the hinge. So I'm not doing that and I same thing here they have you cutting all the way up to put the hinge in here somewhere. The hinge is going to go about here so I'm just going to cut that piece out leave it solid there and leave it solid there um, for strength. Okay, I don't know if you can see it here We've got some holes, little 16th inch holes drilled there. This has already been beveled on both sides. I drew a line all the way down and really just sanded that until I get it at a bit of an angle. I had a line drawn on this corner and I've got a line drawn there. And so you just sand it till it gets down to about that bevel on both sides. So that's the first. I've cut the little holes in there. Then you take Tim's favorite vibrating tool and just start cutting out a little bit so that you've got a complete hole all the way through. And I won't bore you with all that because I can't do it with one hand. Then I just take my saber saw 
and cut a line. So bear with me. All right, so I've got it carved out there. And this isn't the right hinge. I got those ordered, stainless steel ones for in here. But just like that, it fits in there and I've got a little movement back and forth. If I need to move it a little bit more, I can just take the saber saw and lengthen that cut a little bit. But at least I'm not cutting right out the end on the short end here. On the back end, there's probably a foot, six inches to a foot before the hinge actually fits in there. So that's weakening that quite a bit here. I've got about an inch and a half that's actually in there. And again, it's all going to depend on the placement where it fits on the fuselage and everything. So they give you a little free space there. But anyways, that's how I did my little inset one. Again, a first few holes. And I take your oscillating tool just to get a hole through there. And then just take the jigsaw, saber saw, and cut right along there. Alrighty. Okay. Here's the plan for the rudder. I've got the outline of it. You can see it there with the background. I've got the outline done up. This little corner here. This is three quarter by three quarter. This is one quarter by three quarter thick. That's this sitting on there like that. These two are one quarter by three quarters. And specifically I'm looking at this one right here coming into the main post here that is three quarter by one and a quarter thick. So it's the same, it's sitting up like this. This one's sitting here. There's no one to come here. All right, to see that visually, here is the one and a quarter wide by three quarter thick. That's that main shaft. Here's the corner of the rudder. I'm just carved out a little notch in there for the one quarter by three quarter to slip into, just so it doesn't move around. And then that will sit in there like that. I'm just going to glue that up now so that you have that strength in there. And I just carved a little groove in there just so that this wouldn't move around and it's got something solid to go into. So it doesn't want to move. It's going to hold there when it's glued to this. It's going to add that stiffness to the whole top of the rudder there. Then there's going to be another one that's going to come in something like this and go from this corner up into this corner here. But first things first, let's get that one in there, get it glued. And then we can figure out where this one goes and then we'll figure out what kind of gusseting we're going to do on this corner because you want to beef that up. There's a quarter inch here, then a quarter inch gusset and a quarter inch gusset on each side to bring it level with this so that it'll be all one piece across here. It will all be level with this. And then you're going to round this off. Something the same shape as this to match the vertical stabilizer will be like that as well right like that there that's the top of the vertical stabilizer and that top of the rudder will sit in there where these curves match right here so this will be cut away like that all right so let's try to explain this a little bit this is the piece 
that I just glued in onto the rudder. So this is three quarters by one quarter thick. This is three quarters thick. Three quarters by three quarter. This is the one quarter by inch and a quarter depth this way. So if you take this one quarter gusset with this one quarter strip plus a one quarter gusset on the other side of this strip, that'll equal three quarters. So it'll come flush on this side and flush on the back side. This one eighth gusset, I have no idea what that's doing. This is another one quarter by three quarters that will join in this corner here. So it'll butt up against this and this and this gusset will entrap this and this on both sides. This little one eighth gusset right here, I see it doing no function whatsoever. It's only grabbing a little bit of this and it's only grabbing a little bit of this and it's not doing anything else. At the most I can make this gusset a little bigger, the one quarter gusset, and get a larger area in there. Or what I'm planning on doing is taking the one sixteenth and I'm going to go one sixteenth over this entire area and then this all gets sanded down and rounded over all the way. So you sand away this gusset that's over top of everything and you'll sand this down to get that nice rounded corner. This will get rounded all the way around because the wind is coming this way. This is the rounding edge you want to put here all the way around. So I'm going to do this gusset on both sides and then I'll do a gusset across all of this to tie it all in and then I'll round this front corner and I'll round this and that was the piece of cardboard that I had there so it's gonna sit rounded like that on there so again I don't know what this eighth inch gusset is even doing there but I'm not putting that on. up the rudder on the Dakota Hawk the back a bit corner corner one little strip in here sandwiched between two strip gussets then I'll put a gusset over the whole thing there same up in this corner strip in here strip in here little gussets to sandwich these ones and then I'll put a gusset over the whole thing. Another oddity. We've got a 1 16th piece of uh, plywood here. That just goes right above that. So here's a three quarter D HT1. That's this. We're putting bolts through there to hold the actuator for the rudder. The bolts will go through here and that will turn the rudder when they're pulled on it. This is one and a quarter. This is three six or er, three quarters. It doesn't show on here anything to raise this up with this level. It shows a large gusset on here that will go like that. But how do you go from this level to this level? There should be blocking in here to raise this up with this level. So blocking here to lift this up with this level. Um, the bolts will go through this way. That blocking will add 
a little meat on there as well. And it's going to look something like this is what I'm going to do. I'm just going to block it up to the top there. Um, taper it down so that it meets probably down here where the gusset is supposed to go on so that gusset will have a nice flat surface all the way up to that level there. So that's got to taper all the way down with that. All right, okay, the rudder is in place here. I'm putting gussets on that end. I'm still pondering this end. This is where the rudder pivot, what do they call those things, whatever the heck they're called. The turnbuckles, bend ears, blah, blah, blah. But the rudder actuator, whatever you want to call it, all that is here, according to the plans, is this butt joint. They have a gusset over top, DHT, whatever this is, DHT18. Um, both sides, access hole cut on this side only for the nuts where the rudder actuator is bolted to. That's a three quarter inch piece of wood all the way down. This is uh, not three quarter inch, this is one and a half or one and a quarter this way by three quarters this way. That's a butt joint. I don't know how to put a gusset on there that's going to account for that. So I'm going to add just a little piece of three quarter inch by one quarter inch. We'll go in there to make this flush so that a gusset will fit all the way down there. That gusset it's just going to sit on top of here and sit on top of here. And that's the only bracing in this corner. There is no wedge bracing in here because the hinge goes right here. I was thinking, and is there anyone else with a Dakota Hawk out there, of taking a piece of quarter inch ply, obviously cutting right where that line is, and then putting the quarter inch ply all the way down like that. And this is quarter inch by one and a quarter, so it'll match right up with that. And put that right in there. That way you've got the butt joint here. You've got this joint that goes over both of those, and then the gusset will sit over all three, this, this, and this, holding that whole corner together. To me, you know, we were talking about weakness of insetting gussets into just the three-quarter, three-quarter by wherever it's sitting there, talking about weakness of insetting it only a sixteenth there for the gusset to sit in here. Well, this is where your main pivot is for that whole rudder. There is a lot of force on here wanting to twist this and twist that joint apart because that joint is a simple butt joint and that's it. So anything I can do and I think I have to do to try and beef this little corner up where the rudder actuator goes. Is there anyone out there that has any better ideas or has some more clarity on this because according to the plans there's nothing there. There's your three quarter by one and a quarter, there's your three quarter by three quarter and that's it. Other than there is a one sixteenth inch of ply that goes right there. Just a little thing to go on top. I'm imagining just to add some strength to the bolt holes where the where the nuts are. A little piece of 1 16th just sits on top of that 3 quarter. But boy, there is nothing in this corner to help beef that up. 
and the torque force is on that. That's your whole rudder right there is being torqued. So that whole weight of this whole rudder is being torqued right on this one little corner. It doesn't seem right to me. And that's why I'm going to add some three quarter inch by quarter inch just to get it up to here. What I might do is do some joinery and if I take this down a bit I can run the three quarter right over and do a lap joint maybe to help increase the strength of that joint. But then adding this quarter inch onto that I think will add a lot of strength. Obviously that's just going to be cut off and add that onto there as well and then the bolts will go through this way and that actuator is going to sit out here. Anyone have any thoughts?